How do you do? My name is Lowell Lytle. I'm an actor. I, uh, I've been the captain of the Titanic exhibitions around the world for the last 14 years. They bring me in every time there's a new exhibition going to be played. And it's amazing some of the interesting stories that have happened on the Titanic. Some you've never heard of before, and it's a shame. There's a book out entitled The Titanic's Last Hero. It's about a Baptist minister from Scotland. He was on his way to Chicago to preach at Moody Memorial Church. Now, that's a huge church. If you preach there, you must be good, even to this day. And they loved him, wanted him back for three more months of meetings. Reverend Harper thought he would take the Lusitania, but changed his mind, decided to take the Titanic. While having an evangelistic program in Glasgow, Scotland, one of his parishioners overheard that he was going to take the Titanic and prayed about it, I went to the Reverend and said, Reverend, I have an ominous feeling about that ship. Something horrible is going to take place. I just know it. And if you'll take the Lusitania, he said, I'll pay for your ticket. Reverend Harper thought about it, and he said, no. No, the Apostle Paul wouldn't run away from danger. If anything happens, he said, I'm ready. And it happened. And when the ship started to go down, Reverend Harper's faith was tested. And that Baptist minister actually ran around the deck shouting, women and children and unsaved people, get aboard the lifeboats. He even took off his life vest, gave it to a man that was not a believer in Jesus Christ. He thought that'll give him some time to get his soul ready for eternity, because eternity was about to happen. His sister-in-law and daughter Nana were standing right next to him. They both survived. The sister-in-law overheard the reverend when he gave that life vest to that man. He said, here, you take this. I don't need it. I'm not going down. I'm going up. He's in the water now, 28 degrees. Salt water takes longer to freeze. You would last anywhere from 10 minutes to 40 minutes, depending on your will to live and how much body weight you had. But all the cries and the screams ended after 40 minutes. These people did not drown, they froze to death. One man survived in a lifeboat, lived in Detroit, Michigan. Later on in years, he said, every time I went to see the Detroit Tigers play, someone would hit a home run and the crowd would yell and scream. He said, it's the same sound. He said, I hated that sound. Reverend Harper's alone now in the water. He's treading water, it feels like you cannot, but it's just so cold, it's so bitter, like a thousand knives stabbing you. And a man drifted by on a piece of wood, and Reverend Harper shouted to the man, is your soul saved? The man said, no. Reverend Harper shouted, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. And the man drifted off into the dark, and later the current drew him back. And Reverend Harper again shouted to the man, are you saved yet? The man said, I can't honestly say that I am. Reverend Harper's last words were, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. And with that, the reverend slipped under the water and went to that frozen, watery grave. There were 12 people pulled from the water that night. Six of them lived. That man was one of them. And the story was told a few weeks later in Hamilton, Ontario, by that same man who said, I listened to Reverend Harper's last message and became a believer in Jesus Christ with 2,000 miles of water beneath me. Titanic's last hero, Reverend John Harper.